Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and since we're since, uh, 2021 is now coming to a close, um, I'm gonna be now gonna be very my top and my my best and worst movies of this year. Starting with starting with this video, starting with the worst. And I as I said before, with this before I even, it's like I said, it's all a matter of opinion. If you disagree with any of these movies that I don't like, if that you do like. And you do like the movies? That's fine. Per personal preference of opinions. That's the. These are just my opinions. Of course, not. Every, I'm sure not everyone's going. Everyone's going to agree with me. Of course, my bro my brother. He doesn't agree with me at all. Of course, once again, he thinks I'm full of shit. You know, I hate everything. My my opinions are wrong. All the movies that he liked, I should like as well. No, that shit does not fly with me. He likes what he wants. I the way he is, I can't change his mind on those. Uh, I can't change his mind on anything. But he thinks he's right. I'm just full of crap. I hate everything. And him and his friends um, think that I, 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 don't, I, I think the same way. <coughs> well, the thing is, though, we're all different. Though they just don't see the way things I see it. They just think I should jump on the bandwagon and like everything that. The people are like nowadays, and a lot of these movies are popular. That came out this year, a lot of these movies did like it made money, and uh, a lot of these movies did the, these people did like. A lot of people liked when they went to see these, but in my opinion, in my opinion, they all suck. In my opinion, I hate all. I hated these movies. I think all pretty much all these movies are overrated, and and a lot a lot of things just piss me off about them. You know, some a lot, a lot of these movies had a lot of stupid things. They just happen in the movie. And I explained to my brother, he thinks that my uh, my uh, my opinions are not valid. I don't make valid points. So once again, I'm just full of crap to him. But that's just him. We always butt heads on things all the time like this. But he just thinks I'm just always wrong on everything. And I hate everything. Or if I hate everything, how come I got a list of my favorite films I like this year? Oh, but those don't count. Those are in pretty much indie movies. Not the ones that the majority of the people like this year. So. But like I said, I gotta get that way. Because if anyone's going to say anything first, my brother, my brother beat you all to it first. He's the first person I, 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 he comments on. So, if anyone who says who disagrees with me, my brother beat you to it. So, but I say if you disagree with me, I that's perfectly fine. Okay, it's fine you disagree with me. I dis I, if you think the films that you like, I would disagree too. I won't get it though, but I respect people's opinions. I've always I've always been an honest person. I don't lie to myself. I, well, he thinks I'm lying, but I just don't lie. Being honest, you know. So, but anyway, all that aside. Um, before I get to the list, there's some dishonorable mentions I want to put on first. Um, I saw I, I was thinking about putting these on my list though, but they're not. I decided not to because the other ones that were much worse. And I reviewed these ones already. First, uh, first one I reviewed for for dishonorable mention one. I reviewed this, The Green Knight. I think it's a very overrated movie, and I said especially from a very overrated studio like A24. Um, the acting was not bad, though. There were some decent effects. Um, some good view shots of the landscape, you know. But it was a very boring movie. I didn't care about the lead. I did not. And that was the pity of this one. And the type of setting for this... Uh, I know it's based, like, based on this, he's the, nep it's the nephew of King Arthur. And it's based on this poem, which I never even read or nothing, though. And there was another film that was made years earlier with, that starred Sean Connery. It looked like a Christmas tree. So same thing, like this, but different little changes though. But I think it was a very it was epitome of a very boring movie. Not my it was not my kind though, and I think it's a very overrated movie. This whole fresh Ron Tomatoes, I don't get it at all. And A twenty four, very overrated studio, very overrated. I think. Especially, especially when it comes to horror films, they are very overrated and pieces of garbage. But this is another prime example. I like Uncut Gems. I like The Disaster Artist. But most of the time, when it's horror, 
overrated pieces of garbage like Midsummer or Hereditary, The Witch. And this is another one, even though it's not horror though, but this is the one I, I think it's not a uh, very overrated one. So, yeah, honorable, just honorable mention number one, The Green Knight. Next one, I, it's another one I already viewed. Another lame Disney remake or reimagining. Once again, Disney can kiss my ass on kiss my ass on this though. Cruella. Um, you taking one uh, taking a memorable Disney villain who wants to s kill pup Dalmatian puppies to make it into a fur coat, right? That's what she wants because her obsession with fur. She wants to make the puppies into fur coats. That's the th definition of Cruella, a, a, a fur obsessed woman. Who wants to kill the Dalmatian puppies to make them to fur coats. Here, Cruella's not evil in this movie. It was Emma Thompson who was most of, who was the base of the evil villain in this movie. Emma Stone, acting wise, she was oh she was fine as Cruella. But the thing is though, the character itself, once again, I th the thing is with Disney trying to make villains sympathetic. It's, it goes along with the Marvel movies as well. Make make villains sympathetic. When they, when especially villains like these are stone cold, the villains that you want to hate. Cruella did nothing evil in this movie. She wasn't. She takes Horace and Jasper to make a, like a heist, and it was Emma Thompson who was basically the villain. Basically the villain, and she basically sick the Dalmatians, basically killed her supposed mother. And by the end, she and, and, and Cruella likes animals, even the Dalmatians, and she even gives. Pongo and Perty as puppies to Anita. Where was the evil that Cruella did in this movie? I have no idea. Can someone please explain that to me? I already viewed it anyway, so yeah. I don't care. But that's dis that's dishonorable mention um, number one. Um, next is another one called. Um, Oh yeah, another re lame remake, Candyman. I like the original Candyman. Tony Todd is still fantastic as Candyman, you know. And for same with Virginia Manson, it was the chemistry. You know, it was given like that Phantom of the Opera type of vibe. And got some eerie moments too. Candyman is is from Clive Barker is classic. This no. And the guy who plays the new Candyman sucked. And this is a whole lot, of basically, I dare I say this, a lot of wokeness. That's basically what it is. Dare I say it, though. But that's basically what the epitome of what Candyman is. And especially it's produced by Jordan Peele, who directed Get Out and Us, which I liked Get Out. But he produced this, though. didn't direct it. But the director of this film, of Candyman, is going to direct the Marvels, the sequel to Captain Marvel, which I have no interest in seeing. After this, you know, I've, I've basically done seeing Marvel movies. I'm done with it. So, yeah, Candyman. Another dishonorable mention. Yeah. I haven't reviewed it, though, but I'll get to it, though. That's why I wanted to get too many details on it. So, the next one. Uh, other dishonorable mention. Since Disney owns the rights to 20th Century Fox... No, sorry, studios. Screw that. I'm not saying studios. It sounds stupid, all right? 20th Century Fox. Since they all all those properties, right? Another one we don't even need and no one asked for. Home Sweet Home Alone. God damn, man. Because they want to do it because this is the first one owned by Disney. That's the main reason. Oh, since we're going by Disney, now let's, let's make a Home Alone movie. Because we got the property owners. We got the properties. I never, I hated, I hated this kid. I did never liked him. He was unlikable to me. And the villains, the bur, the burglars, the burglars, they were not that evil either. Same with freaking Cruella. There were some, there were some of them that that, that, that that belonged to them, and that's why they're trying to do it. And then, but the kid is so stupid. He tries to freaking kill them over it. Well, he doesn't know. He doesn't know that say it was all, it was a misunderstanding. Another pit, another pity of example for another fr another just this is why franchises in Hollywood they need uh, the they keep are still continue continuing to this day they need to die, come up with new original ideas. But they can't do that. You hardly see anything original nowadays. 
no one asked for us. No one wanted it. Okay. Just because Disney owns everything doesn't mean we didn't continue with the shit. Yeah, I'll review it sometime later. Best realize. Whatever I, whatever I, 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 I'm talking about, I don't review. I'll get. I don't want to get too much details because I will get more detail when I review them later on. So that's why. But fuck home sweet home alone. Fuck it. I'm tired of this. Anyway, that's yeah. Home sweet home alone. What else? Um. Oh, okay. Uh, that's right. At the, at the start, of the, it was the start of twenty twenty one. Um, it was a good a good idea, but it's wasted. It was one was called. It started Chloe Grace Chloe, Chloe Grace Morez. It was called Shadow in the Cloud. Had a good idea, but it was wasted. You know the idea of her. She's this girl. During the time it was a World War Two, I think it was World War Two. She's on this plane. This one is one of these fighter planes. And it makes the whole thing, makes, oh, the whole thing of men are bad or stupid and women are the strong women, right? Tired of hearing that. And the whole idea what that's going on, you have this monster. People say it's, people say it's a gremlin, I think it is, but it's also a gold monster. Majority of that, not, pretty much what it does in the trailer is almost pretty much a lie, because it isn't, not much of that is shown in the movie. And the ending, because, because also because uh, she's carrying this package... Because she's carrying this package, and this thing is this package is, gets tossed around a lot. And by the end, when she open what's in the package, I'm like, "Yeah, freaking right." It was so stupid for the other way. It was so stupid for that. I don't want to talk. I don't want to say it though because I haven't, I haven't reviewed it though. So, but. How the, uh, when I saw that at the end, I was like, "Good idea, wasted." Shadow in the cloud. I mean, Glory, Chris, Glory, uh, Grace Mer- Merez, acting wise, she was fine. I don't, I never minded her in other movies because oh, she was she was in Kick Ass. Um, I know she was in Hugo, the Carrie remake. She's, I never minded her. Acted why she was fine, but the film itself was crap. Wasted of a waste of a good idea. And that's pretty much all the dishonorable mentions. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's all that's all the dishonorable mentions. So, oh right, no, wait a minute, hold it, hold it. And I got and I gotta say this, I did I did review this. So, no wait, no wait, yeah, no, nah, you know, screw it. Screw this. No, I'm putting this on. Uh, this, those, those are those are all the dishonorable mentions, okay? Yeah. So the, yeah, those are. Yeah, sorry, I was getting discombobulated for a second. Those are my dishonorable mentions. Now, my top eleven. Did I say top ten? I didn't mean to say top ten. I meant top eleven. I, there was eleven movies that I dislike. Although you could probably say top ten. I have one movie that I want to put on there, which. I did say I said it's not in my top ten though, but I just put this one above the rest because I did review this not just recently. And I said it would this would not be in my top ten, but I'll put I'll, if I did I'll put this on top. I'll put this at eleven. Not my top ten because like I said, all the other movies I thought were much worse, and they they pissed me off more than this. So, but getting top eleven. Yeah, so you can say top 11. Yeah, I'm putting it at top 11. So number 11, Spider-Man No Way Home. And this is what I, get, this is what, and this is what I mean. I already viewed it. And this is what I mean. If you like the movie, that's fine. I know I already said my piece on what people are going to think of when I did that review. I know. Hey, some people agreed with me. Some people don't. But at least they were respectful. They said they liked the movie. And I respect your opinion, Kyle. See? Only just be you just appreciative, you know? Respectful. Of course, if they if they want the to do the comments, if they like the movie, totally fine. They respected my opinion too. See, and some people didn't agree with some people agree with me too. They didn't like it. That's what that's what my brother doesn't get. He that's what my brother doesn't get. You know, not I'm not the only one who did not like Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay. Oh, but um, he says that oh 
the, 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 whoever leave the comments about that, you know, they're your cult. Great. So I all all of you guys here who are my who subscribe and follow me, you're my cult now. You're part of my cult. That's what my brother says. <laughs> hey, will you say that? If you if, I don't if you want to, I don't mean the people who say, say, do me to say, it, but that's what my exact words my brother says. You guys are my cult. Sometimes my brother talks like a freaking idiot. I don't mean an offense to that, but that's what my brother says. Yeah, but Spider-Man No Way Home, yes. That's a, that's number 11. Number, Yeah, number 11 because... I already, I already get my rants on it, right? But I just... Yeah, even though it's, it's 11, though, but it doesn't excuse the stupid things that happen in this movie. The whole thing at the beginning that the old high old idea of him of Mysterio being him framing him for murder, those drops like in five minutes. The reason why the spell got the, the whole spell got botched because they couldn't him and his friends couldn't get into MIT. And Doctor Strange is an idiot. And how how did a Peter get how somehow managed to get back into his body after when Doctor Strange did the push his soul basically his soul out and he's like, how are you doing that? Good question, right? And yes, it makes even Doctor Strange dumber because he Spider-Man beats him in the in the mirror dimension. You know, a powerful character like Doctor Strange gets beaten by Spider-Man. I know Spider-Man he sometimes uses his wits and a lot of stuff, and and he's a smart kid. You know, I get that though, but it just makes Doctor Strange look like a bitch, a wit, a, a wussy, wimp, sissy. And this is why. And this is why. I, and. Why I don't want to look forward to seeing the sequel to Doctor Strange. After this, you know, I'm basically done with Marvel. I've had it. I took my last chance on this movie because I hate all the Marvel films. This that came out in 2021. I thought I'd give this a chance. Probably the best one I've seen. Technically, it's the best one I've seen, but out of all of them, but but thing is, it doesn't excuse because Peter Parker. He is six movies in, and all the experience he gained from those movies, including finding Thanos. He still has not, has not learned common sense still. He is stupid in this. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I, li I like the moments where, you know, we talked with, you know, we, after losing Aunt May. I like the moment where we talk, Paul, um, was talking to Andrew Garfield and Toby Guire and they were talking about how they lost their loved ones. I like, yeah, I like that moment, though. But the thing is, though, common sense. He takes the, pretty much, except for the lizard who's outside in a truck, all the villains he takes pretty much into... Because they're currently staying at Happy's, John Favreau's apartment, right? He brings them all there. And Aunt May is there. You know, with the potential thing that they, they... Oh, maybe not Doc Ock, though. But the other ones could potentially to turn around and kill Aunt May, you know? Especially Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. Or Electro. Um, yeah, just, because, just bring them all in. Just bring, just bring them all in. No common sense at all. Thinking, And he, he thinks nothing, nothing, nothing of it. That's that that's that's one that's one thing. That's basically one of the dumbest things that Peter Parker has done. And the whole finale at the Statue of Liberty, it was pretty much like just a whole mess, you know, a cluster mess basically. You know, you know, it was the shade camp, but it's saying who's who, you know, which because because you know that the all Spider-Man, they all have their kind of similar costumes, you know, having three villains to fight three villains. You know, it's just, it just kind of defeats you know, in the comics, you know, of, you know, the Sinister Six, which you don't get in this movie. What we think they're gonna try for Sinister Six later on in the years? No. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose in the comics of Peter Parker just fighting him, just one Spider-Man fighting them, six of them by himself. It kind of defeats that, but he always has to. Everyone has to help everyone. Out. You know, like all the heroes of this movie has to help out one another. They can't do it themselves, right? Especially, especially Spider-Man. But he has to have the two ones have to help him, especially it's three on three. Because Doc Ock, Alpha Molina, Alpha Molina did a good job in this movie. I like Alpha Molina. It was nice to see him back as Doctor Octopus, but he's pretty much a good guy. After the fight on the bridge, he's a good he's a good guy in this movie. After the bridge, it was yeah, and then he he pretty much cured Electro, Jamie Fox. <sighs> Yeah, 
and Andrew Garfield's his grand re-entrance coming back as as Spider-Man. Oh, prove your Spider-Man. Go um, uh, the throwing bread at him. Go clean that cobweb. And then Tobey Maguire. Oh hi, basically. And pretty much, pre oh. all this is just potential just wasted. In my opinion, it did. Okay, in my opinion. But my brother, like I said, when I when I started to talk about this movie, this is when he said I was full of shit, and his friends too I thought I was full of shit. Yeah, I know. I'm 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 so full of myself that I saw things differently than he did. See, this is what I mean. But yes, I already talked about it. Like I said, um, oh yeah, I said, oh, I forgot to mention another part in the movie that's where I said, oh, um, where Peter Parker said, because uh, since everyone knows who's who's Spider Man, he he is Spider Man. Um, he said, oh, this is hurting, this is hurting everyone. How is it hurting everyone? Everyone's taking photos of you, even at school where they built a shrine of you. You know, and everyone's like, oh, hey, Spider Man, Spider Man, Peter Parker, Spider Man. How is it hurting everyone? But it's only hurting his friends, and because they can't get into M MIT, and that's the reason why he needed want everyone to go forget he was Spider-Man. No, not because of them. He he was framed for murder of Mysterio. No, because he couldn't get to MIT. That's why I couldn't get. That's why I can't get my head around it. I think it was better to forget people he was Spider-Man because he was framed by Mysterio. I just don't get that. It just completely boggles my mind on that. But yeah, like Jimmy Fox was cool to see him, Alfred Molina, Willem Dafoe. But the whole thing is stupid. Like, oh, it's like he invites all the villains to his place, doesn't think nothing of it. You know, the potential of MA being hurt and all that. By the, well, they had it dead because Willem Dafoe pretty much killed her. So yeah, I already talked about that. So I already, in my review of it. So yeah, number 11 is Spider Man No Way Home. I know, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm crazy, I hate everything, I know. That's what my brother says too, so. I know, I'm crazy. Anyway. So. Um. So that's number 11. Oh, I, I forgot to mention. I forgot to I forgot to mention another dishonorable mention before I get into my top ten now. Yeah, number ten, number num, number ten, number another uh, dishonorable mention number four. I think it was um, Venom two. Let there be carnage. Um, yeah, um, for, yeah. I forgot to mention yeah, the other Ven Venom two. Let them be, let them be carnage. It's another taint. Uh, Tamed and neutered PG-13 movie. We have Venom is an R-rated character, right? Same thing with the first movie. That's another issue I have with it. The first movie. Same thing here. Carnage, who's definitely an R-rated character, right? He's been completely tamed and neutered in this. Hardly no Carnage at all. PG-13. Um, where you do Carnage this, this weird tornado, which never does again in the prison. Not much for blood either, because Carnage. Yeah, Carnage. When your name is Carnage, you go out all out, right? For R-rated. That's what Carnage does. R-rated gore stuff. None of that in there. Not much for say, let there be Carnage, you know. And the pretty much the fight between. Um, Venom is at the end. Woody Harrelson, I like though, but he's wasted in this. I like Woody Harrelson. But he's wasted. And the, the character of Shriek never cared about. I know the characters in the comics too, though, but a plot device because uh, Cleus Cassie loves her. Um, and this also basically also leads up to a throwaway post credit where Liam Spider-Man for No Way Home. We finally, with people thinking, oh, he's finally in the MCU now. Venom's and Tom Ray's in the MCU. No. Nope. That's a throwaway because. He never shows up in the movie except for the very end of the credits of Spider-Man No Way Home, and it just returns back to the, his own universe. Complete, I've never seen a completely pointless and throwaway credit ever. For both. Well, for that character, for a character either. But I'll get more on that later on, though. But that's not a dishonorable mention I had, I forgot to mention. 
So yeah, but that's those are the dis yeah, disarmable mentions. Venom 2, Candyman, Home Sweet Home Alone, Shadow in the Cloud, and that was pretty much about yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. But I already did number eleven, Spider Man Spider Man No Way Home. But now getting to the top ten now. Top ten, number number ten. Um Old. M M Night Shemalon Old. Yeah. He's getting too old for this shit. M Night is getting too old for this shit. This guy should never direct any more movies ever again. He is no doubt in the top three worst directors of all time for me. <sighs> God, he can't even direct his actors to act like human beings in, in his in his movies. After he did Signs, which the first three films he did, they were only the ones that the first one he did, his first three films were only the ones that are worth a shit. Unbreakable, I enjoyed. Signs, I liked. Six Cents is the least I, I, I like of his, but I still it's better than all of his all his previous movies. So it's pretty much Signs, Unbreakable, and then Six Cents. Rest of the movies he did after Signs has been completely utter dog shit. Pure dog shit. From the village, the happening, Lady in the Water, After Earth, um, um, Glass, Split, The Visit, especially, Jesus Christ, um, and this. M. Night, go away, never direct any more movies ever again. Your movies have not been worth a shit in over a decade. Okay. Oh, and Fred, yeah, and the last Airbender. Who forget? Who can forget that? Last Fartbender. I'm so sick of freaking tired of M Night Shyamalan. Yeah, M Night, why don't you go in bed and say good night? Say good night to your career, and never make any more movies ever again. I'm so sick and tired of your shtick. It's pretty much the same thing. It's getting old, pun intended, fast. See what I did there? Yeah. So sick of it. I'm so sick of M. Night. Yeah, but old. And... Uh, the last ten, though. Number nine, Godzilla vs. Kong. Yes, Godzilla vs. Kong. This one I did, rant, I did a big rant on. Another one that said, well, my brother thought. Another one that my brother thought it was said it was foolish. I was full of crap too. Yeah, he said I'm full of crap on all. He said I'm full of crap on, on all these movies I, I'm listing here. So I don't need to keep bringing it up because he says I'm full of shit on all these movies. But God, yeah, Godzilla vs. Kong. Good special effects on King Kong and Godzilla. Guess good solid special effects, but the human characters. I never care for pretty much in all the, well except for God, um, Kong Skull Island. I like Tom Hiddleston, um, John C. Riley, right? Godzilla King Godzilla King of the Monsters. I like Kyle Chandler. Um, but most but most of these characters in this franchise I don't care for though most of them. Like I said like, especially God, in Kong Skull Island. I like Tom Hiddleston, Sam Jackson. Um. Even Brie Larson, yeah, but not Captain Marvel. The Brie Larson in Kong Skull Island, and uh, John C. Riley's character, especially, I like his character. Guy who's been on the island for so long, didn't realize that how many years has been, and the war was over. He was in trying to get home to his family. And Kyle, uh, Kyle Chandler, he was one of the only, pretty much the only human character. Well, except for Ken Watanabe when he did self sacrifice in um, King of the Monsters. But Kong, Godzilla vs. Kong, like I said, the human characters pretty much in this suck. I didn't care for Re Rebecca Hall, Alexander Skarsgård's character. I didn't care for him. The little girl either who, was, who could talk to Kong. And the whole thing, the and there was, the, there wasn't much Godzilla vs. Kong, you know, except for the fight of the battleship, and I love the thing in China, and that was pretty much about until they fought Mega Godzilla together. Mega Godzilla did not need to be in this movie. He did not. It was just a set for you know, 
And really said, I hate when they do that when they, oh, whoever wins, uh, one will fall, whoever. I hate when they do that in trailers, except when it turns out they don't. So, and, and pretty much for the good center of the middle of the movie, it was just them following Kong to this under, uh, secret underground world, where pretty much where he originally came from, his family did, his ancestors or whatever. I mean, that good portion of the movie you could have set up for a sequel, for another King Kong sequel. It just didn't need to put when you put into a film called Godzilla vs. Kong. The whole thing that underground, hidden dimension of monster land, whatever where they, they call it, that could have been saved for a sequel. <sighs> Basically, barely, to over a two hour movie, barely no Godzilla vs. Kong. They said the one fight on the, on the battleship. And then a little bit in China until they team up to fight Mecha Godzilla. So it wasn't pretty much mostly Godzilla versus Kong. I didn't, I didn't care for the crate. She like, God damn it! This film is giving me freaking indigestion now. I got this wife. All these movies I'm bringing, I just want to burp all over them. It's giving me bad indigestion right now because I had pizza. That's why. That's what pizza does to me. But this, but they give me, they would give me all these films give me a bad indigestion anyway. I want to puke all over these movies. I didn't care for I didn't care for the the kid who played from Deadpool two, the one who uh, that Josh Brolin Cable wanted to kill that character. I didn't care for him in this movie, the crazy conspiracy guy, Brian Tyree Henry. Um, even sadly, even Millie Bobby Brown who played which a character I did not mind in Godzilla vs Kong, but. King of the Monsters, who was Kyle Chandler's daughter. I didn't mind her in King of the Monsters, Millie Bobby Brown, but here, not much. Kyle Chandler, he's only got like about a minute of screen time. Um, and this and, and this guy is directed by Adam Wing, and it's directed by Adam Wingard, who I not I'm not a fan of this guy at all anymore. Well, I never was anyway. I never was a fan of Adam Wingard. I never was not a fan of Your Next. I hated Blair Witch. What was that other? Oh, um, the the live action adaptation of Death Note. I'm so sick and tired of this guy. This is one director. I just just just, 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 just another one like M Night. Just go away. I was skeptical when he thought he was chosen to direct this movie, and I was right. I think they should have brought they, they should have brought back Michael Dougherty, who directed King of the Monsters. You know, the guy who directed Trick or Treat, and I wasn't a fan of Krampus, but I like Trick or Treat though. He showed more passion in that sequel than this guy did. Had Michael could had Michael Dowry Dowry come back to direct. At least he he had more of a passion in making that movie than this guy here, Adam Wingard. The score I, I liked a lot was was better in Godzilla King of the Monsters than the score I got here. Because I liked the I liked the reversion of of Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla. I did, and. Ken Wanabe self sacrifice when we're trying to revive Godzilla, I liked. So yeah, yeah, Godzilla I like Godzilla King of the Monsters more than this. Or Kong Skull and more than this. So Yeah, I already gave a big rant on that film. Some people agree with me on that, some people did not did not agree with me on it, so But yeah, number nine, Godzilla vs. Kong. Okay, so how's it going? So number eleven, Spider-Man: Fort No Way Home. I'm trying to keep track here. Number ten, old. Number nine, Godzilla vs. Kong. Yeah, those, that, those, yeah, pissed me off. Old and Godzilla vs. Kong. <sighs> number eight, Zack Snyder's Justice League. I know, I know that uh, he lost his daughter some time back. My deepest sympathies for him on that, Zack Snyder. Are, you know, my deepest sympathy for losing your daughter. You have my condolences on that. I do. But as a director, with this film and another one I'll get to after this movie. Well, it's pretty much the same movie though. But and after the one that's further down, uh, more on my list. I'm done. Like with Adam Wingard, I'm done with Zack Snyder. I don't want to see any more movies from him. Because because I and it's sad because I love Dawn of the Dead. And I loved Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gohul. Watchmen I liked. 
didn't love it. I didn't love the movie. I just liked it. All, you know, I just liked it for Watchmen. But I hate his, the rest of his. I hate his other DC movies though. The universe he created, and I hated Justice League. I hated, for, I hated it when I back in 2017. I hate it. Still hate it now. With this, and everyone was so excited for the extended cut. Already extended cut. Four hours long. Waste of my time. Did not need to be four hours long. I guarantee you half of that movie. Pretty much two hours of that movie was all in slow-mo. It did not need to be four hours long. And he just way overblown it with the, the slow-mo. He is the director who is the epitome of slow-mo. It was so redundant. So, you know. So redundant and done. It's you know, it's not cool to enjoy slow mo anymore because he uses he overuses it so freaking much. Pretty much every five seconds, you can say. That's one thing. Didn't have to be four hours long. Way too long for me. Half of the movie is slow mo. Way overblown. Overbloated, you could say. And. This, I just still care, and, and oh, oh, and thank God for we got the exact the Zack Snyder's cut of this movie because I still hated Jason Momoa, I hated his Aquaman still, but the thing is, the what got me, the, one of the things that got me is that uh, the pretty much the thing was the beginning where we he's, he's going to the ocean and for some reason you have these women singing in a choir, <laughs> and then you have a woman who pretty much he gives. He gives this woman his dirty, B.O. infested, fish infested sweater, and she sniffs it. You, you see this? See, you see this? See this? That's what she does. Sniffs his fish infested B.O. sweater. Yeah, thank God we got the, the we got the Zack Snyder's cut for that. <coughs> To see a woman dis s sniffs his disgusting bo infected infected sweater. Thank God we got the Zack Snyder's cut for that. Thank God. She must she must have a pretty much a freaking it's pretty much has to be like a fish fetish. That's what she has with this guy. And And a Wonder Woman, who is fast, and she can block bullets, and when they're these bad guys, yeah, they're bad guys, though, you know, killing these guys, but pretty much when she does this, pretty much blowing the front part of the building up, even with the hostages, they're pretty much, like, five feet away. I know they're bad guys, though, but pre <laughs> almost pretty much killing the, the hostages, too. She, I know she's fast, she can block bullets, though, but... Doing this, you know, pretty much blowing the whole front of the building up with hostages that are pretty much five feet away from the front part. He has to take out this one guy. And what a coincidence that when she was on the t when she was looking on the TV and saw the whole that when they shot when those Amazon women shot the arrow, the flaming arrow lands in a certain spot. Thank God it was co coincidentally it was on the exact station on the TV where she was watching and recognizes it. And what else? Cyborg, we got a little bit more backstory of his character, but I didn't care for Cyborg. Cyborg, I still didn't care for. Um, Ezra Miller, as the Flash, he was the most annoying of the group. He was the most annoying of the group. Especially the scene in the slow mo where you see this woman after a guy who drops a freaking driving a truck and drops his sandwich on the ground, that dirty ass floor these feet are on. And when she she, she sees and when the woman is when he's in slow mo the woman they saves, who looks pretty much dead and the freaking hot dog I swear he was gonna put it in her freaking mouth I sw you don't believe me you watched that scene did it look like he was gonna put the hot dog in? although he puts it in his pocket though to give to the dogs though but oh my god I hated this flash I hate this interpretation of sl a flash can I just go watch the uh, the John Wesley ship TV show please. I hate, he was so annoying in this movie. I hated this Flash. And you know what? I would bet good money when the new Flash movie comes out. I bet good money people are not going to see that movie for him. They're only going to see the Flash movie because of Michael Keaton's Tim Burns Batman. 
I guarantee it that that's, that's the only reason people are going to fl fly out to see the movie, not caring about The Flash, but only to see it for Michael Keaton. I guarantee it. I would bet money on that. Because people, oh, nostalgia, right? Because pretty much that's what the whole thing is about is nowadays, is, is nostalgia. People are going to, I guarantee people are going to see it for Michael Keaton's Batman and not for The Flash itself. And to me, that's pretty freaking pathetic for not to see the particular character, but see a character from the past. God, the, this movie was way too... Uh, There's more I can get to it though, but I just want to make it. I don't want to make this too long of a video though. But yeah, just Zack Snyder's Justice League. Too long. Uh, uh, <sighs> Maybe want to fall asleep. So that's number eight. Just, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Number seven. It was uh, it was a toss up, but. I gotta go with this. <clears throat> Number seven, another one that my brother thinks I'm full of crap on, Halloween Kills. Yeah, Halloween Kills. I was not a fan of the 2018, first one of 2018 anyway. This was even worse. <sighs> this was even worse. Because... Jamie Lee Curtis, when she re when she freaking retracted on, oh well, she first of all she she, she pretty much craps on Halloween too, saying that oh she because she was, did not much lying in a hospital bed, but what does she do here? Jamie Lee Curtis being hypocritical on that part, what does she do in this movie? She pretty much stays in the hospital, pretty much the whole movie. So she was being hip hypocritical on that, pretty much taking a dump on Halloween two, for 1981. I mean, I like Jamie Lee Curtis, so, but sad to say that she was being hypocritical on that. And pretty sure she doesn't like Halloween 2. I love Halloween 2. That's a very solid sequel. I love Halloween 2. But I think she, when she says that, though, I'm sorry, Jamie Lee Curtis. I, ha I completely disagree with what you di say. I think you were full of shit on that. What You see, you complain about Halloween 2. What, what, what does your character do here? You know? You're pretty much in the hospital the whole entire movie. Evil will die. Evil dies tonight. No, it's not because we have Halloween ends. Was the thing that say that takes place four years later? So yeah, evil. So that's not a lie. Evil does not die tonight. Um, what else? Oh yeah, with the firefighters. I know. Yeah, there, there was some decent. Ab gore cannot say this movie. Yeah, it has gore, but gore does not say the movie because I've seen a lot of hundreds of slasher horror movies that has gore in it. So. Um, Take out the gore. What else? Oh, the fireman. Oh, especially the one fireman who has a fire hose. And just stands there while Michael Myers is just continually walking. I know. I know we, when, it, when, it, when it comes to a fire hose, it's so powerful. It does hurt a lot. It can probably bruise you, your midsection, you know, if you get in right there. But here's the thing. When you when you keep on using the fire hose and Michael Myers keeps on, keeps on coming and coming and coming and it's not working... It's time for you to drop the fire hose and bolt out of there. But no. See, I burp because that, that's another bullshit reasoning right there. See that? You drop the fire hose and you, um, what was it? Get the fuck out of Dodge, basically. Bolt out of there. You know, sayonara. Run out the SWAT team. But no. He stands there with the fire hose when he, when he was... And what else? God damn it. And the whole thing with a gay couple living in the Myers house. Oh, Big John, Little John. Get it? Big John has a small knife. Little John has a big knife. Yeah, I get it, okay? I didn't care for them. I didn't care for them. It was not freaking funny. The funny part has to be Danny McBride's doing because he is one of the writers that's along with the director. The, the non-comedic funny stuff has to be Danny, McBride, Danny McBride's writing. And more stupid decisions. Like the dumb thing with... After when... When they kill Marion Chambers yet again. And the one woman is outside with a gun. Michael Myers kicks the door open. And makes the girl shoot herself. 
And not to mention also that the, there was an escape patient from the hospital. And they say it's Michael Myers, but it looks nothing like Michael Myers. Because he wears black overalls and wears a mask. And this guy is completely opposite of that. He was just a, he was just a frightened mental patient. Until they try to stop until, until it's too late and the guy also just commits suicide. I mean, you think that people think that's Michael Myers? And the fact that at the, uh, so... Oh, Taylor was so excited about the finale. You know, because now the mob was there. Which they kind of ripped off from Halloween 4. You know how the, the townsmen were going to try to go out and find Michael Myers and shoot him? And those three guys, um, they, uh, those four guys that actually kill, mistakenly kill a guy? Kind of taking a life from Halloween 4. And, um... And the mob at the end, Anthony Michael Hall, Tommy Doyle, they're all beating the crap out of him, you know. I mean, they hold a bunch of clubs and stuff like that. They're beating the crap out of him, though, but why doesn't people have guns with them? You know, just get guns, shoot him in the freaking head a whole bunch of times. Or fill his whole body, get a whole bunch of guns, fill his body full of holes. Especially the head. Make sure he's brain dead. It doesn't get up, or his head is mush. No. They just beat him for a little bit. They let up until when Michael gets back up and kills the whole mob. Including Sheriff Brackett, once again played by uh, Charles Cyphers. Because they bring, bring old characters back for the nostalgia, right? Yeah. Great, great fucking job. And also, for some reason, the, the uh, Judy Greer, who plays Jamie Lee Curtis' daughter, for some reason, she sees little Michael Myers in the clown suit upstairs in the room. For some reason... And yet, that was related to her getting killed as well. Oh God! Is it goes to show? I said before, I said it before, and I say it again. It goes to show you can't do nothing new with Michael Myers. I love Michael Myers. He's my pretty much the favorite of the horror icons of the Boogeyman. He's my favorite ever since from John Carpenter's Halloween, Halloween Two, Halloween Four. Hell, even my I rather watch Halloween Resurrection over this. And Halloween H2O, and Halloween H2O I like still. I also like Halloween H2O. Halloween Resurrection, I'll watch over either of these new movies. At least it was some, it was different. At least it was, I could watch, you know, because the, well, except for the opening, the 15-minute opening of Halloween Resurrection. That's bullshit. Except for the 15-minute opening, the rest of the movie I can watch. Uh, especially it was different with the whole webcam, you know, a little bit found footage style. And Busta Rhymes, trick or treat, motherfucker. And Kung Fu and Michael Myers. I'd rather watch that than any of than any of these new Halloween movies. Ho over, especially Hall over Halloween Kills. Yeah. And there's another overrated, hyped, bullo bu bunch of malarkey movie. I'm so sick of tired of this. And now, but it's not going to end because they're doing Halloween Ends. Which, by the way, the franchise is never going to end. They say it end Halloween Ends. Well, still Hollywood is nowadays, they're going to continue milking, milking the franchises, you know, until it's Dry to the bone. It's time for these franchises to die. I'm so sick and tired of these franchises from the past continuing on like this. Nothing new, nothing creative, nothing. And once again, my brother says I'm full of shit again. He likes the movie fine. Be my guest. Be I'm wrong on this one. Anyway, that's, that's that was number seven. Halloween Kills. Number six, Eternals. Number six is Eternals, the most boring of all the Marvel movies that came out this year. Of all the Marvel movies that came out this year, this was the most boring. I did not, I did not care about any of these characters, any of these, any of these Eternals. I did not care a rat's ass about. Uh, why is that one girl who, like, runs really fast, why is she a mute? Why did Eternals make this one Eternal a mute? Why did, why did the Celestials make this one Eternal a mute? I have no idea why. She can run fast, but why is she mute? I have no idea why. Um, all, all of them, they look bored, oh, especially Angelia Jolie. Angelia Jolie, she looks bored out of all of them. She looks, when you watch her, she looks like she's just bored the whole freaking time. She's like, Hello. When you love somebody, you fight for it. She looks bored out of her mind in this movie. Selma Hayek, wasted. I like Selma Hayek. Thankfully, she was in another movie I liked. I, I, she was in another movie that I liked 
from this year. I'll get to that though, though. But Cinema Hike wasted in this movie. It's way too over long. Like every freaking Marvel movie has to be over two hours long now. Well, actually, I think Venom Two. I'll give credit though. Venom Two was not two hours long. So, yeah, that's one thing I guess I can say about Venom Two. It wasn't over two hours. But the MCU movies, they're all over two hours. They don't have to be that long. It would, especially if we, one movie where all like ten characters try to establish each one of these, and that one evil deviant crow, one of the lamest of the I've seen in a while, absolute complete nothing of a villain, and yet Angelina Jolie just cut just cuts very easily. Voiced by Bill Skarsgård, played the new Pennywise from It, could have been played by anyone. That voice. Of that villain could have been played by anybody. I did not care for anybody. I didn't care for the lead uh, Eternal played by Gamma Chan. I didn't care for the wannabe Superman Icarus. Angela said Angela Jilly was bored. Oh, the one guy who from from Stuber, the guy Stuber, who um, pretty much is an asshole at the end. Pretty much towards the end because. All this time he's complaining about, oh, we're friends and family stick together and all this stuff. But yet, before the whole, whole big fight at the end, he just bails out. He runs away, doesn't come back for the main fight. He only shows up after when the whole world is saved. So yeah, he pretty much just chicken shits, chicken shits out. Or, no, you know, he is a chicken shit, that's what he is. He chickens out. D doesn't stay, doesn't go and fight, nothing. He doesn't fight at all, and he only appears at the end when everything in the whole world is saved. The guy who played Stuber. So you hypocritical a-hole, where you talk about, oh, family and friends stick together, but yet you go and bail out, leave your friends to, to save the world, and you just go and show up at the end where they did save the world without your ass. And it was so goddamn boring. Everyone was so lifeless in this movie. Yeah, I was mean light. That's what I said, lifeless. The only best thing about this, really enough, the only <laughs> kind of ironic for myself though, because I love anime. The best thing, the best part of this movie was Arshim the Judge himself. Which Arshim the Judge, he looks cool, the Celestial. And the thing is though, he's voiced by David K. David K. He is voiced by. You can see my finger right there. He is voiced by Sashomaru himself. Yeah, so Arshim the Judge is voiced by Sashomaru. I, I could I couldn't I couldn't believe that. That was the best part of the movie right there. Hearing David K. Sashomaru voicing Arshim the Judge. I am shitting you, that was the best part of the movie. Not shitting you. It was the most boring of the of the MCU movies. Well especially this year, but of all the other ones, this was the most boring one. And yeah, I would say this, and I would say I would agree with people say this is the worst MCU movie because it is the lowest rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Of all the MCU, all the all the MCU movies, this is the most lowest rated one, and I can see why. So yeah, that's that's my thought on the internals. Number six, number five. Uh, get to number five. This is this this is getting um. No, yeah, okay. No, this is going to be... Uh, this is gonna be Number five, why well, I mentioned Zack Snyder. Yeah, no, I mentioned Zack Snyder. Number, well, I saw him after, uh, with Justice League, but this year. Number five, Army, Army of the Dead. This is what... This is, the, this is the final straw for me for Zack Snyder. The final... This was the final straw for me. I don't want to see any more Zack Snyder movies after this. Let's look at a good... I, once again, like Shadow in the Cloud, a good idea wasted. I like Dave Batista. Um, they could take which it, the trailer was pretty much a whole lot. The trailer was a lie. The trailer lied to us because we thought it was going to be like a, a heist, you know. Um, Haruki Sadana, you know Kenji from Rush Hour Three, the, the the who he was the one who hired Dave Batista and this team, you know, tell him to this only like the whole world is not affected. It's only this one section that is affected. And that's Las Vegas. Cool idea setting, okay? 
the whole world's not affected. It's only the section of Las Vegas. And they want them to, like, to go to, like, this, this part that has a whole bunch of money before they bomb the area and get it out, right? It's pretty much a, it was a thing where they want to pretty much want to make it a weapon, of course, like, do, like, all the other movies, you know, weaponize the virus. Why couldn't just make it, like, a heist movie? Get the money and bail out before they drop, before the bombs fall. What? That could have been a good idea, you know? But they always make it, like, a, always have to weaponize everything, you know, like... T- and, you know, because it was different because these, these zombies are smart, right? And the whole thing, a lot of it was, a lot of the, what we saw in the trailer, it was in a dream sequence. It was cool, though, but it was a dream sequence. And the girl who, who kind of looked like Vasquez from Aliens, no one goes in to help her, and she's just continuing fighting until she gets bit and dies. So... Great job. No one is there to help her. They just stand by and watch as she fights until her last breath and dies. Nice. Oh, uh, and the one person I hated the most was Dave Bat- the girl who played Dave Batista's daughter. She was the worst character in this movie, and that's what she what pisses me off more. Because pretty much she got her, she got the whole team killed, including her dad, played by Dave Batista. I like Dave Batista. She's she should have died in this, not Dave Batista. But because of her stupidity, she pretty much got the whole team killed, and including her dad. And yet she lives. That's what infuriates me more. Because she didn't freaking listen to her word dad said. She said, no, don't go there. If she did, and guess what? Stay, she says, neither stay, stay put, do what you're told. No, she disobeys. It just reminded me, like, that the, the niece from the last Rambo movie, um... Um, Rambo Last Blood or whatever I think it was I forget though but it reminded me of Rambo's niece from that, that, that new Rambo movie who didn't listen to him and and she decided to go down there anyway to see what happens and look what happened and because of her stupidity she ended up getting injured and then ended up dying from the wounds so here this was even much more fury I hated the daughter of this I wish she would have died she pretty much got the whole team died, and including Dave Batista. Oh god damn! See, like, I keep on burping because I'm getting tired of talking about this bullshit. And I ranted on Dave, uh, Dave Batista. I ranted on Army of the Dead a while back. You can check it out. It's still on my channel. I'm done with Zack Snyder. I am done with him. I don't want to see any more movies with him now. No more. I'm done. It's the same thing with the Marvel movies. Like, after Spider-Man No Helm, why should I care about Doctor Strange 2, the Multiverse of Madness? Why should I care about Marvel, the, the Marvels? Why should I care anymore? I'm done with Marvel, okay? But yeah, that, so yeah, that was so inferior. That's what, this is what, again, the ones that pissed me off the most. So number five, Army of the Dead. Number four, Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. It was it was it was a potential to finally give a proper adaptation of Resident Evil, and they just freaking blew it. They did. They could they had they had their chance to make a proper adaptation, a faithful adaptation, and they didn't. They screwed up again. And you know what? It just makes me. I just want to go back and watch the first to the Resident Evil movie from two thousand two. I just want. I I will have. I will, I will say. It's, that's the best one of the franchise still. That's the best one of the franchise. The first Resident Evil movie. From 2002. Yeah, even though it didn't follow the game. But guess what? I got more some more entertainment value than I did from any of these movies. The sequels or this movie. I mean, the girl who played... Um, Claire, uh, was it Claire? Yeah, Claire... Yeah, I think it was Claire. Which is because I liked her. I liked her in Crawl, from two, when, from twenty nineteen, the Crocodile, the Alligator movie with Barry Pepper. Her, she was in the Maze Runner movies. I liked her in Crawl. She's doing the best that she can in the, in re, in this movie. It was it was so many. The guy who played Lee um, Leon, he was a dumb idiot. They made him into a dumb idiot. I remember 
me and my brother remember these characters from back then, you know, right? From the back from the original games, right? They meet like he he like here's another here's another example. My brother, he saw Resident Evil after I did. He liked the movie, and once again, I'm I'm wrong once again. That's what he says. I'm just full of myself. And even I explained to him, how can you testify of Leon sitting at the police station, sitting in the front of the desk with headphones he's listening to, sleeping? How do you explain that he doesn't hear a front, a crash right in the front door, exploding, exploding, right? Crash, explode, and a guy walk into the station in front of the desk on fire... And yet, the guy is still sleeping. And even though, in the beginning, when we first, when we first see him, he's asleep, and they're putting a freaking ketchup bottle on his head, and they're shooting it off his head. Oh, you shot, you shot your, uh, your former part, your, your partner in the ass, right? Um, what is, your, your middle name is S? What does it stand for? Stupid? They make Leon a, a freaking idiot. A dumb fucking idiot. I'm just going, yeah, I'm going to say it. Dumb fucking idiot. That's what he is. And it just it still boggles my mind. He's, he's just sitting there asleep at the desk, headphones, and he doesn't hear a crash or an explosion, and the guy is walking into the station on fire, yet the guy is still oblivious to that. What else? And there's not much zombie action. I mean, there's a, there's a zombie dog attacking uh, Donald Logue, the guy who played... Um, Mac from Ghost Rider. He was the uh, the, first, the one of the vampires in the first Blade. He was later be on the TV show Gotham. He's the police chief. He was like pretty much a, he was a villain in the game, but they don't do though. And you know the, the the whole thing they wasted it with the whole police station. They wasted on that. They waste the they waste the police station. They say the rest of the, the characters they run down a hall, shoot some zombies, and that's it. Or a little bit in that garage fighting that that zombie dog. The liquor, we get one liquor that kills Donald Logue, and that one girl that she that Claire, um, uh, whatever that saw in that orphanage, she kills it. Well, with the sack over her face, she kills the liquor, breaks its jaw or neck or whatever. Bad CGI. And Neil McDonough, which a lot of movies he's been in sucks. Although there's been some, there's been some good ones he was in though, but most of the movies he does star in suck. We turns to see here we go again talking bull crap again. That's why I'm burping. Every time I talk about bull crap about these movies, I burp. See that you pre even proof of that. He turns to a bad CGI monster. They could, they could have a chance to make a faithful adaptation. They don't do it. They still manage to screw up. Even get less of, uh, I mean, less of that in the police station. Disappointing. Not much happening in the mansion where we got like um, her brother, the lead character's her brother, shooting some in the dark. It's pitch black. Helicopter crashes in. So. And so and somehow. Um, the character I forgot. Oh, I forgot. What was the guy's name? He, he was. I know I should know these characters because I've I've, heard, I've seen this character before in the games. But he's the one who won who ended up betraying them. A uh, Wesker, I think it was Wesker. I think it was Wesker. Yeah, he's the one who ended up betraying them, getting shot right. But somebody managed to survive a nuclear blast because um, he later wakes up in the out of a body bag and he's blind. So, how do you manage to survive that? Well, they probably picked him up beforehand. I don't know. And the guy who the guy who directed this, he he mentioned John Carpenter. I'm sorry, you're not John Carpenter. The guy who directed Forty Seven Meters Down in the sequel, you're not John Carpenter at all. You're you're not even this. This is how. I would say John Carpenter has much talent as Peaky than this guy does his entire career. I wasn't going to say that, though, but it doesn't make any sense. 
Don't mention John Carpenter because you're not. Okay? Resident Evil welcomes to Raccoon City. And the only thing is, though, yeah, there's another thing. Doom from 2005 with Dwayne Johnson and Carl Urban. Yeah, that was not a faithful adaptation to the original game, though, because it was pretty much going like Doom 3, right? From the game Doom 3. That's what they were pretty much going for, but I guess I understand people are upset because of how it was not like the original game. But you know what? Yeah, there were, it needs more. It needed more action. But the thing is, I like Dwayne Johnson. I like Carl Urban. Carl Urban did kick ass, you know, a bit, and especially the point of view shot as well. That was the go, going to the game, and a little bit of role, a different role for Dwayne Johnson becoming a a, a villain. And turning, start turning into the creature. Like by the end, he's like super fi, motherfucker. So, at least I mean, I like Doom though, 2005. Yeah, despite not being the that proper adaptation though, but I rather watch Doom over this. So yeah, Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. <sighs> I gotta start going because this, this is an overall now long. I don't want to make it this long. Jesus Christ! I gotta start, I gotta speed this along. Number three. Yeah, no, number number three, Cinderella. I did a big rant on that as well. It was absolutely. I'm. Mean, this will be short, okay? Cinderella this year. It was absolutely atrocious. It was torture to sit through. It is one of the worst musicals I've seen, and this is another one I go go back into like the wokeness. If you, if I dare say that, the wokeness, you know, the fairy god, the f oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I can't say that. fabulous godmother, not if you can't say fairy godmother, fabulous godmother, because the because the guy is of a godmother, you say godfather, you can say, because the guy it's a guy and he's a fairy basically. You are if you say if I say fairy, you know what I mean. And Pierce Bronson as the king, embarrassing one of his worst roles. Go from James Bond to this, to embarrassing for Pierce Bronson. Idea, Idea Manzel, who plays the stepmother, go back to vo go back to voicing Elsa from Frozen. Stick with voicing Elsa from Frozen. That's all you can do. The girl, the girl who plays Cinderella, didn't give a shit about her. And all the re the this all the songs they did these remix versions from the, of songs from the past, horrible. It was absolute torture. It was it was definitely torture for me to through through. I it was so bad. I, I just I had to, I had to stop this. And I had to walk out for a second. It was that bad. It was it was one of the worst musicals ever seen. And especially when I said the wokeness, like I mentioned. I'm sick of tired of these game this game put into movies as well. Especially with tale, fairy tales like these, Jesus Christ me! Sick of seeing this bullshit in movies. So I'll be sure on this, yeah. So Cinderella, that's another one that very aggravates me and pisses me off. That's number three. Number two, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Another example of a franchise franchise that doesn't need to go on anymore. Another is because I love the ghost. I love Ghostbusters. I love number two underrated sequel because people just shit on that a lot. I don't know why. I love Ghostbusters two, underrated sequel. Yeah, technically, yeah, technically, twenty sixteen Ghostbusters was worse though, but because with old pussy fart joke, but still, but to me, this is more offensive because being canned to the other movies and what they do with the characters. Especially with Egon Spangler, Harold Ramis, may he rest in peace. They say they want to honor his memory. To me, I think it was offensive. To me. In the opening, where he's sitting in a chair, he gets attacked in the chair like with Sigourney and Weaver did. Um, the gang breaks up again. And Dan Aykroyd is Ray telling Egon Spangler he should rot in hell. Because why, they didn't believe him? After all the crazy things that's happened, why they should why they shouldn't why should they believe Harold Ramis in the first place? Of everything they've been through, they think they, why would she why should you believe about this prophecy that's going on? Why? 
Why should I think... Why do they think he's now just batshit crazy now? And think of when they... When the family drives into the house, there's a sign. That's where there's a reference where he wasn't even there in Ghostbusters 2. It was when, when Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson were talking about the revelation of like three, something 316. Harold Wimbus was not even there for that when they when they were talking about that. So how did he, how did he know that? And Ghostbusters 2 did a little more diff- things different with the whole pool of slime or the gang controlling the Statue of Liberty or a guy coming out of a painting. So. But yet, that, people just shit on that movie, though. Saying it was too, like the first film? No. But, I just lost it. See that? Once again, I'm stupid about bullshit because my stomach is giving me ingestion because I'm talking about more bullshit about this. I'm tired of it. In fact, the, that Ray told Harry was to rot in hell. I couldn't hear, I thought I heard that. And that they sold the firehouse and it became a Starbucks. That's a joke, yeah. The girl who played the granddaughter, she was trying the best she could. She was. She was trying. I didn't care about the, the older brother, the kid from Stranger Things. I didn't care about the mom. She was pretty much a bitch the whole movie. And told to the end, oh, and I'm a believer. Paul Rudd, he was not as much as it was as he was depicted in the trailer. And it's funny that they are showing in his, uh, his in his classroom. They're showing he's showing movies like Cujo and Child's Play. I'm like, I'm thinking, yeah, let me go watch. Uh, referencing good movies, that I'd rather be watching. And pretty much finally, pretty much the same villain of the end of the first movie. Oh, the terror dogs, the Gozu, Gozu, whatever. Are you a god? Pretty much, you know, it kind of makes the pretty much the ending of the first movie pointless. Oh, well, it's not true because they they save the city though. They save the city though, but defeating the villain was pretty much pointless because he comes back again. And the it makes it makes Egon Sparrow. They say he's a batshit crazy old man. Why? Why shouldn't they not believe in the first place? After everything. And I'm sorry, and, and especially Bill, and well, and especially it makes so awkward by the end when they see his ghost. He doesn't talk because he's dead. Harold Ramis is dead, and that's why they he, they can't make him talk. He does with his facial expression. Does this the facial the expressions? Because he can't talk because he's dead. It makes it so awkward to watch, and weird. And I'm sorry. And yeah, Bill. And yeah, Bill Murray. He should apologize to Harold Ramis before he passed away. Especially, you know, the past when he treated when he, when he treated him like shit. Bill Murray treated Harold, Harold Ramis like shit. Especially on working on Groundhog's Day. But it's too late for that now. And Bill Murray's not gonna apologize. And I'm sorry. I love Bill Murray. Talented actor. Talented comedic actor. But the thing is, though, in real life, he's he's nothing but an asshole. I'm sorry to say it. He needs to get a stick up his that get that stick out of his ass and be humbled, you know. If they reflect on things he did, you know, the shit he said in the past, especially to Harold Ramis. But it's too late for that now. And the thing is, oh, Bill Murray's not got Bill Murray. He's not got to apologize. And what else? Muncher, always oh, blue, and it looks like shit. On the, in the some of the jokes. Like what? Um, what was the guy who was the the sheriff in this when they were arrested and when the girl wanted the phone call and he's like, "Who are you gonna call?" So, uh, yeah, this little was just pissing me off. Jason Reitman, did you learn anything from your father's two movies? Jason Reitman, did you learn from your father's movies that they're comedies and not a drama? And I did not laugh. It was doing big comedy. I did not laugh once. I did not laugh once. I think he was just trying to be much of a com- a, com- a drama comedy. And they fell on both ends. Especially, first of all, don't make Ghostbusters a drama. It's a comedy number one, okay? Both of, uh, both of your father's movies were comedies. Yeah, it had some heart. They had heartfelt moments, though, but it didn't. It was not 
anything to come out as as dramatic as a drama. And all the all the things, all the nostalgia stuff, right? You see this, remember the terror dogs, the stay put marshmallow men? Oh, and the suit and um, the little, the handy device that Harold Ramis had. Right. See, here we go again. I'm spewing out bullshit again. As I'm tired, I'm tired of the nostalgia train going on in all these movies. I'm tired of it. And yet they even they even repeat music from the first movie. You like especially the one scene when they were walking up the staircase and they were all tired. Do, 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 do. They even, they even repeat that in this movie. So you're stealing music from the previous, the first movie. Great. And yet this gets the pass, and while Ghostbusters two still gets the still gets shit on. I don't get it. This is another one that just pissed me off a lot. I hate Ghostbusters Afterlife, and like I said. Franchises should just they just stop making these movies for, for from franchises from the past. Let's say come up with newer ideas, but they can't do that because they're Harley. Harley, nothing, anything is new nowadays or original. So yeah, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Oh wait, yeah, I forgot to mention. And yet, I gotta mention this really quick. Um, how the mother and Paul Rudd they get possessed, just like Sigourney Weaver and Hal Ramis did, becoming terror dogs. Even the mom kind of wears the same similar dress as Sigourney Weaver had. This is what I mean about the freaking... You get it? You remember the first movie? Yeah, I get it, okay? Stop freaking throwing that in my... In our, the, the, stop, throwing, stop throwing nostalgia in our faces. We get it. We, it's from the first movie. I get it. Yeah, he chases Paul... One chases Paul Rudd like it did with Rick, Rick Moranis. I'm surprised with all the characters that came back, you know. I'm surprised they didn't get they didn't ask Merc Moranis to come back. I know which I don't blame Merc Moranis because he's been retired from acting for for decades now. Yeah, this is another just pissed me off. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Ghostbusters Afterlife. That's number two. And last but not least, number one. Space Jam New Legacy. Space Jam 2, go to hell. That's what I simplify. Space Jam 2, go to hell. Why is this number one? Because it pisses me off because Space Jam is one of my all-time favorites. As I grew up watching that film so many times growing up. I love Space Jam. Uh, one of the best soundtracks I've, I've listened to in my lifetime. From um, Fire Like an Eagle, uh, for, uh, for You I Will, I Believe I Can Fly... The, the, main, the main theme, Space Jam. Welcome to the Space Jam. One of the best music soundtracks uh, I, I've, I've listened to. I love the soundtrack. The whole the, And the whole thing, the reason why we made it unique, because it was, it was set at the right time, you know, especially at the height of Michael, Michael Jordan's popularity in basketball, at the time when he played baseball and then coming back into basketball. That was like at the right time, right? Making a uh, 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 the height of the popularity of Michael Jordan. It did. It made it's what made it a little more unique. And all the and I like all the basketball players from Charles Barkley to uh, Patrick Ewing, uh, La Larry Larry um, Larry Bird, and even um, Larry Johnson. Muggs, uh, uh, Muggs, uh, uh, Muggsy Bogues. Um, Sean Bradley and and was it even Bill Murray, Wayne Knight? I like I, I loved Wayne Knight in this. He was funny as hell. I love the the humor, the animation. Just the you know, just the it was just a film that was kind of made at the right time, you know. In this film, none of that. And the, I even say that the first Space Jam, I love so much. I, I thought I had a heart to it. I thought I did. This, another soulless adaptation. It shouldn't be called Space Jam 2, whatever. It's Ready Player One 2.0. Ready Player One 2.0. Except the Warner Bros. property. All Warner Bros. property. Um, yeah, it was kind of... This is a film made for kids, right? And yet you have... The, yet Warner Bros. being so hypocritical, dumbasses, where, oh, Pepe Le Pew, he's a... He's a whatever, um... Oh, 
a pedophilic whatever where they, why they canceled him. That's why he's not in the movie. But yet, they, they're hypocritical when they throw in characters, the rapist from a, qu- a clock, Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. Hmm, what are they doing in that movie? Oh yeah, but, oh no, Pepe Le Pew, he's evil. And, they, and get characters that we love, you know, oh, we don't think we'd see this because the, everything has to be modernized nowadays. Oh, Porky Pig, breakdancing. No, no, sorry, that was Granny. Granny breakdancing. Yeah, that's what we see Granny do breakdancing. That's the type of character from Granny from the past Looney Tunes cartoons. We want to see her breakdance, right? Or Porky Pig doing the freaking mic drop. And I don't know if I mentioned, what's the freaking mic drops in this? Like, I forgot to mention Venom 2, where Venom is in a rave, and he even does the mic drop. First of all, I hate that meme. I don't ever get why dropping the mic is such a, a popular meme nowadays. I hate the dropping of the mic. I hate that. What does that establish anyway? What does dropping the mic establish? What does that achieve anyway? I never understood the dropping of the mic thing. I hate that meme. I don't know why that's a meme nowadays. I never stand it. I don't know. I'll never get it. I hate that meme. I hate the dropping of the mic. Yeah, but Venom, he drops the mic. Porky Pig, he drops the mic. Granny breakdancing. Oh, the whole thing with Lola Bunny sexualizing her. Un, I mean, because who gives a who gives a flying? You think people back in the day gave a shit about what how Lola Bunny was designed back then? Oh, Bunny Boots. Who gives a flying fuck? You know. Think you think I you think I you think I was uh, looking at thinking of that back when I was a kid watching the movie? No, I was too busy enjoying and loving the movie and the characters. I didn't, I was a little kid. I didn't think about buddy booze like that. Whoever I even thought of that. I think kids like me didn't were too busy thinking of that. We were too busy liking it and laughing at the movie. And especially LeBron James. Fuck LeBron James. I am not taking. I know, I'm sure people, people will say, yeah, people will say he's a good basketball player. I know that. But the thing is, though, in real life, as a human being, he's a piece of shit. He's an asshole, okay? I am not ta- I'm not taking it back. Michael Jordan as himself in Space Jam, the first Space Jam is acted better than LeBron James as himself in this movie. I think I said before about the trailer sometime back... If I did, I'm taking it. I, I retract that because I think I regretted that after I said that after the video. Shaquille O'Neal is better acted than LeBron James is. I'm not even joking. Like he's acting in Kazam or even Steel. As as low as I go on that, Shaquille O'Neal is better than LeBron James. At least Shaquille O'Neal is not a straight out asshole like LeBron James is. Whether it, especially in this movie. He's playing himself with his, especially with his son. He's an asshole, and especially in how he is in real life. Because he so you think is especially in real life. You think his his an ego as big as an ego as big as his head. I hate LeBron James. I can't I can't stand him. You know, I never such a, I never was a fan of him anyway. But more is it to him as a human being. He's a piece of shit of a human being. I'm not taking that back. My dad's the my dad is the same way. He never liked him as a bas as a basketball player, and, I, and essentially we say agree on the same thing. As a human being, he's an asshole, a piece of shit. And especially, especially it was torture for me to sit through, especially watching him in this movie. After Michael Jordan, you get him. You know, Kobe, I wish I, I rather took Kobe Bryant. May he rest in peace. I would have took Kobe Bryant in this movie, or Kevin Durant, or hell, I even go for Steph Curry if I have to, you know. But anybody but LeBron James. Especially, he was an asshole. Especially in this film, he's an asshole to his son, who wanted to make video games instead of doing basketball. What is wrong with that? People make millions of money, a lot of money, making video games nowadays. Why? Especially, it's not, it's much, oh, it's cyberspace. It's of space, space jam. And they have a very shitty adaptation of the original theme as well. That, that was insult. And it basically turns into Ready Player 1 2.0 with all the, the characters that are Warner Bros. property. 
from the Hanna Barbera, Hanna Barbera cartoon characters, uh, the DC characters, Iron Giant, King Kong, and even the oh, including the rapists from the Clockwork Orange. Well, yeah, this is a kids movie, but yet you throw those in there because you think kids are, are not stupid enough to think, are to think, oh, who are these guys? You think kids are stupid enough to, to think they they don't know who these guys are? That's the thing. <sighs> or Pennywise the Clown. Yeah, a scary clown to give kids nightmares from the new It movies. This is what this is one that pisses me off most because this basically shits on my childhood uh, film for me. This is one this is the pisses me off the most. Especially get an asshole like LeBron James. Even Michael Jordan or Shaquille O'Neal, they're not straight out assholes like for as I know they're not, for I, if I know, I'm mistaken, but they're not as near as far as what he uh, as what LeBron James is. Like I said, he's a, he has a, his his ego is so far up his ass. I I, I talk about this more. I don't want to talk about him anymore. I know he he can't act for shit. I'm sorry. I thought I said before about Shaquille O'Neal, but he's better acted than than LeBron James is. I'm sorry. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not taking it back. I'm seeing this here straight with a straight face. I'm being deadly serious. Because this is how much he pisses me off, and how much the film itself pisses me off. And it's directed by freaking Malcolm D. Lee, who directed Scare Movie 5. You got the guy who directed Scare Movie 5 to direct a sequel to Space Jam. Scare Movie 5 is also a piece of shit. The worst of that series. And, and by the way, I'm glad this film bombed, by the way. I'm glad this film bombed. This film did not make more money than Space the first Space Jam, Space Jam did. I'm glad. I'm glad this film bombed. I would make it, I'd gladly make an assumption about a film bombing. I'm glad this film did. So yeah, this is this yeah this is my, easily my number one because this is what pisses me off the most. Shitting on my childhood, especially one of my all time one of my all time favorites. A freaking almost half hour and a half on this crap. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This film is I'm sorry for this video for being way too long. I apologize, but I just couldn't make I couldn't make this any shorter. I could okay. I do apologize for making this video that long. If you made it this far in, I'm sorry. I apologize. But yes, that this is my top eleven worst of 20, 2021. I apologize for making it from this too long a video. But so if anyone has made it this far, good on ya. But yeah, these films just pissed me off. Twenty twenty one was basically a worst was one of the worst years I've I've seen for for movies that is. So yeah, number number eleven, Spider Man No Way Home. Number nine, a ten, number ten, sorry, number ten, old. Number nine, um, Godzilla vs. Kong. Number eight, Justice League. Number seven, Halloween Kills. Number six, Eternals. Number five, Army of the Dead. Um, number four, uh, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Number three, Cinderella. Number two, Ghostbusters Afterlife. And number one, Space Jam New Legacy. And the, uh, the dishonorable mentions, yeah, like I said, I mentioned uh, Home Sweet, Home Alone, Shadow of a Cloud, um, Venom 2. I forgot to mention Mortal Kombat. That's the one I forgot to mention. Mortal Kombat, but I'm not getting into that, though. I'm too long as it is. But Mortal Kombat was another dishonorable mention for me. So, yeah, this is my top 11 worst movies of 2018. 2018. God damn it. So, this movie is in front of my brain. It said 2018, 2021. I apologize, and I apologize, I apologize for making this a long video. I have, I'm so sorry about this, but there's no other way. By the time I did my best movies, which is a relief for me, hopefully I'll try to make it shorter. But yeah, so yeah, to my top worst of 2021. Like I said, if you if you agree or disagree with me, that's cool. All right, this is this is my own personal opinion. Um, oh yeah, Green Knight and Krill, those are also dishonorable mentions, I forgot to say. But yeah, 
But if you if you like any of these movies, that's fine. I hold nothing against anybody. I respect your opinions. But in my opinion, the, all these films are overrated, bu bunch of bullshit movies. And yet my brother thinks I'm crazy, I hate everything, and I'm the one who's full of shit. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, I hope you enjoy this long-ass video. I think it's the longest one I've ever done now. Wow, new record for myself. Great. But thanks for watching, and stay tuned for my the top best films of, the, of, the, of 2021. Fuck all these movies. Up their ass. Later.